So now in this lecture we will do some analysis of the time frequency atom. Uh, just for s uh, some sense, we you know we do some joint analysis of time and frequency in STFT also. There was this some time factor, and this was this frequency factor. What we did is that in this this is in this FT. there was this u and this parameter zeta now what we do is that we try to find the variance in time domain and variance in frequency domain of the of the what we what we can say a simple this window and try to understand so if i take some window like let me say g of t g of t minus u e raised to the power j zeta t if this is something then its variance uh, this then what will be its variance in some sense variance in time will be this whole function this 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 g star t the complete the shifted in the scale g let me say cap t is equal to g of t minus u e raised to the power j is equal to let me write this uh, it will be equal to t f t d t integration this will be sigma t and we are trying to find the variance this is the variance of the simple signal but if we are interested in finding the overall the overall look of, look and feel of how it is happening then we will find the variance of the power or uh, 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 sort of uh, sorry the instantaneous energy instantaneous energy so the energy at any point is this and power is nothing but just the uh, over a period of, or this is nothing but power spectral density or the energy instantaneous energy whichever way you look there is energy series or this power series and all those concepts comes but for now let us just uh, energy signal and power signal just uh, keep it that f of t whole square what is this f of t whole square will be this f t into x star t this is nothing but sigma t and in the frequency what will be it will be t times the same omega times f of omega whole square d omega integration 1 by 2 pi this will be equal to psi of omega so in that sense the product psi t into psi of omega is what will always be less than or equal to 1 by 4 this is given by heisenberg uncertainty principle heisenberg's uncertainty principle i can prove it but it is very very difficult not difficult but too lengthy and you will at the end get more confused principle so in in like the summary of what we had studied the sigma t it was nothing but the energy integration of that whatever the window it function whole square times t or t times t and this has to be divided by the whatever if we take the energy as one okay because obviously we have to normalize it okay so that's in that sense and and the sigma omega is nothing but integration omega g of omega 
whole square d omega 1 by 2 pi divided by the energy this is same as the same okay so let me write this as e divided by p as well. so now omega times this is also equal to omega times something is also equal to the derivative in time domain g omega holds g of t holds square dp they are the same energy. so this is the way if you observe now i am trying to give you an intuitive feel if you observe that the energy the way in which g of t minus u e raised to the power j zeta now the time the the way in which it behaves i am trying to explain you can derive the the statements which i am trying to say but for now just try to get an intuitive feel in stft if you if you go to any point uh like for a particular u comma zeta the sigma sigma t and the sigma omega at any point do not change so in that sense the sigma t and sigma omega always remains the same and therefore we call this as translation invariant so the time frequency atom in ta in stft case is translation invariant in that sense if you go to any particular u comma z and try to calculate the sigma t and sigma omega they will remain the same but this will not be the case in wavelets now let me explain what will happen in wavelets in wavelets what is the formula f of t psi of t minus u by zeta or t minus u by s uh, s okay this is what is the formula for wavelet cwd continuous wavelet transfer so now let okay let me take an example always one important property in continuous wavelet transform is that or let me say it will never be zero omega that omega g of omega or psi of omega okay psi cap of omega that wavelet transform will never have will be something like this which will have some maximum it will be some sort of a band pass filter why will it be band pass filter we will understand it but for now just understand that it will be some sort of a band pass filter so now when there is a higher so let me say that it it allows this band of frequency to pass centered around let me say omega naught okay understood or not so let me say that if the scaling is equal to 1 this is frequency okay so when the scaling is equal to 1 it centers it around some let me say here only some omega naught when scaling is equal to 1 and let me say the shift is also this shift is equal anything okay So this is my sigma t, and this is my sigma omega. Okay, but as soon as if so, you you are getting it that it is centered in frequency around omega naught. But now, if I increase the scaling equal to two, 
so scaling happens at uh, uh, so there is a dilation so what is happening that there is a dilation in time by 2 and compression in frequency by 2 so whenever there is the scaling becomes 2 so the, it means that frequency spectrum will get compressed so now this will become omega by 2 so the centering will become equal to let me use this red pen so now the centering this was for scaling is equal to 1 for scaling is equal to 2 the centering will be around omega by 2 and in the time the centering in the time it will become the window will become stretched by some factor so in time it will be stretched or dilated so now the figure becomes something like this this becomes equal to s times sigma t this becomes equal to s times sigma t because this is increasing because of the dilation in time for example you know no that if i if i if this is the time frequency if i reduce it it becomes increased in frequency if i reduce it i it becomes increased so there is this scaling factor is increased in this scaling factor leads to what is the fourier transform first of all psi of s times This will become psi of s times omega into s times uh, psi of s omega. This this Fourier transform this will be. So in that sense, just for now, understand this main point that if you observe, then there will be dilation, and there this will be this contraction. So sigma omega will become sigma omega by two. and suppose you take this scaling factor is equal to 2 now if i take the scaling factor equal to 2 just tell me it means that in time domain so in time domain there will be sorry a scaling factor of what we can say 2 raised to the power minus 1 so this becomes psi of 2 times t minus q because scaling factor is 2 to the power minus 1 so the time compression leads to frequency expansion so when scaling factor is equal to 0.5 it becomes so the frequency becomes expanded so this was the original and now it will become something like this so if this was omega not this will become 2 omega not for scaling is equal to 2 to the power minus 1 so it will become there will be an expansion this will become 2 times sigma of omega this will become 2 times sigma of omega and this will become sigma of t by 2 or for any general scaling and scaling it becomes s times sigma t and this becomes sigma of omega by s so this is how you are able to see that how there is this uh, this time frequency is behaving by the way the changing uh, by the different scaling factors so it is not even so we tell such transform which we have we are calling wavelet as translation translation variant so in that sense the nearby frequency this nearby frequency will be grasped with a uh, with wide band in time and the far away frequency will be grasped by a uh, a small narrow band in time okay so in that sense we have got a few a basic a, a very crude idea of how the time frequency atom behaves and this is very important so how will it be how will the overall figure be just let me draw it okay it will be something like this okay 
something like this, okay? It becomes smaller and smaller. So some sort of this kind of graph is how. So it is, it is this kind here and it is that kind here. So the sigma t and sigma omega constant t is changing in a very, in a very different fashion. Okay. So by this we.